EnviroSoc is the sociological study of societal environmental interactions. That boils down to questions like what social factors cause environmental problems? What counts as an environmental problem anyhow? Who gets to define that? What are the societal impacts of these problems? What's being done to solve these problems? And that has kept some very smart people very busy for several decades. Charlie Darwin, with his emphasis on how the environment shaped behaviour, and indeed existence itself, is the granddaddy of EnviroSoc, but classical sociology, from Durkheim on, tended to downplay the direct effects of the environment on society. Indeed, by the mid-20th century, mainstream sociology came to believe the environment was irrelevant. It wasn't until the late 1970s that things changed with the work of William Catton and Riley Dunlap. According to one thinker, there are five basic epistemologies of environmental sociology, that is, five different theories of what to blame and research for environmental degradation. Neo-Malthusianism takes Thomas Malthus's ideas of population growth outstripping the planet's productive capacity, mixes in unconstrained individual selfishness, and says there'll be an inevitable tragedy of the commons. That view has been challenged by Nobel Prize winning political scientist Eleanor Ostrom, economists like Amartya Sen, and sociologists like Alan Schneeberg. The new ecological paradigm. Humans like to see themselves as exempt from environmental influence and constraints. Our cultures of accumulation and innovation, our cortexes and opposable thumbs, free us from the tyranny of being animals and the ecological constraints facing animals. Really? Say, Dun say Dunlap and Catton? Humans are impacted by cause, effect and feedback loops of ecosystems. The Earth has a finite level of natural resources and waste repositories. Humans are not exempt. Neo-Marxism. Meanwhile, some Marxist theoreticians decided that the state wasn't only the executive arm of the bourgeoisie and used their class conflict and analytic tools to look at the environmental movements not just as cultural but also political and economic struggles. At the same time, eco-Marxists like John Bellamy Foster pointed out that Marx wasn't just a cheerleader and stooge for industrialization. But, according to the Wikipedia article, the big shift came with Alan Schneeberg pointing out that state, capitalists and labour were all together on the treadmill of production, growth meeting everyone's needs for taxes, profits and jobs. His three predictions were First, the desire for economic expansion will prevail over ecological concerns. Second, Governments will attempt to control only the most dire of environmental problems to prevent health and economic disasters. Third, once environmental degradation became severe, political forces would respond with sustainable policies. The driving factor would be economic damage caused by environmental degradation. The economic engine would be based on renewable resources at this point. Production and consumption methods would adhere to sustainability regulations. However, those committed to traditional forms of unbridled growth oppose this movement towards sustainability, as we're seeing in the United States right now. Ecological modernization. In the 1980s, in response to the neo-Marxist analysis that was too doomy and gloomy for career advancement, came ecological modernization. Continued economic growth and a habitable planet were compatible, said some, when humans were smart and diligent. Phrases like cradle-to-cradle -cradle production cycles, industrial ecology, biomimicry, and greening industry became popular. Social construction of nature. Most recently, after the postmodernists kept bleating about discourse, attention turned to how, while environmental problems are materially real, they typically require to be socially constructed to be noticed. Finally, given our species' failure to act on environmental problems, the coming decades will have a sixth epistemological chapter in the EnviroSoc story, centred on questions like, 
which, te which textbooks should be thrown onto the campfire next? Which sociologist is plump enough to keep the rest of us fed for a few more days?